This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this uh, 3D vector uh, pie chart icon using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and uh, we'll get started here in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll come up here, make sure we have the view set to custom, and then we'll zoom in at one to one. And then we'll open up the align and distribute menu with this button over here. And we're gonna want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're going to do is create a circle. So let's grab the Circles and Ellipses tool and hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And uh, I'm going to come over here to the Opacity and bring that down about in half. And I'll go back to the Select tool, which is up top here. And I'll right-click on that circle and go to Duplicate. And I'm just going to turn that copy red and then I'll hold control and shift and scale in uh, scale down the size of this, this red circle maybe about that much and then I'll hold shift and click on the black circle behind it and go to path difference so what we're going to do now is break this up into three individual parts that will make up the, uh, the pie chart ring here so uh, to do that I'm going to start out with a, uh, the stars and polygons tool which is over here we're going to want polygons selected and corners we want uh, 6, rounded 0 and randomize set to 0 and we can just hold control and shift and click and drag to create a polygon like that where the corners are going vertically up and down like that and then we're going to come up here we're going to turn on the snap to cusp nodes and then we're going to turn on the snap to smooth nodes as well and we're going to go back to the select tool uh, right click on that polygon go to duplicate I'll turn that blue and then I'll just take this top left corner over here and I'll click and drag it and I'll snap it onto this bottom middle corner of the red object over here. Then I'll right click that and go to duplicate. I'll make that green and I'll just take this one and snap it over here like that. And I'm going to click and drag over all three of those and group them together like that <clears throat> with that button. And then we'll come over uh, here, this button that says snap to the, um, not snap to the page border, snap uh, from and to an items rotation center. We're going to turn that on and we're going to take this series of corners right here and snap it to the center point of this ring. So we'll just bring this over here and wait until it snaps like that. And we're going to have to make this a little bigger. I'm just going to hold control and shift and make this a lot, a lot bigger like that. And then I'm going to go back and, and, and recalibrate it. So just click and drag it to snap it back onto the center point like that. And that's pretty good. We could turn off the snap to center point option now. And I'm just going to lower that one step so it goes beneath the ring. And then I'll ungroup it and click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So I'll take, um, I'll click on this ring, right click that and go to duplicate, hold shift, click on the green polygon and go to path intersection. And I'll click on the black ring. I'll duplicate it again. Instead of right clicking it, I'll just go to control D to duplicate it. And hold shift and click on the red polygon and go to path intersection. And then finally we could take this uh, black ring, hold shift, click on the, uh, the blue polygon and go to path intersection. So we should have three individual pieces like that. So what we're going to do now is uh, let's click and drag over all three of those and let's flip them, flip selected objects vertically like that. And um, I actually want this ring to be a little thicker. Uh, j just to show you how you can do that without having to go and recreate the whole thing. I'll come over here to the Edit Pads by Nodes tool and I'm just going to hold Shift and click and drag over all of the nodes on the inner edge of this object here. And then I'll turn on this button that says Show Transformation Handles on Selected Nodes. And I'll just hold control and shift and scale those nodes in like that. And you can make this uh, thinner or bigger or thicker, whatever you want to do. I think that's, that's about a good size right there. And I'll go ahead and turn that off. I'll go back to the select tool. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this bottom arrow and just click and drag that up like that. And then I'll, um, maybe I'll make that a little wider. 
and I'll right click that and go to duplicate hold control and just click and drag this copy up to about here maybe about there that's pretty good and we can click off of that to deselect everything and I'm going to take this top green copy and I'm just going to make this dark green so we can see it up against the lighter green and I'll just hold control and I'll move this all the way up here like that then I'll take this uh, top red copy and I'll just come over here to the fill tab and under the HSL tab I'll go to the L row and slide that to the left a little bit. Maybe to the, uh, yeah, to the left to make that darker, just so I could see it up against the other blue object. And I'll hold control and move this up to about here. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll take this red object and hold control and move that down a little bit. And that, that's, that's pretty good. So what I want to do now is zoom in on this whole thing so we could you know, get a closer look at what we're working with here. So I'm just going to press plus on the keyboard a couple of times and zoom in. And what I'll do now is... With this red piece still selected, I'm going to bring the opacity of that all the way up. And I'm going to make that this shade of yellow over here, which is FFCC00. And then I'll click on the red object beneath it, bring the opacity all the way up, and I'll make that the same shade, which is the FFCC00. But I'll come over here to the H uh, row and, and, and just click that down arrow to make it a little more orange like that. And what we want to do is connect together these corner points right here. So we'll grab the Bezier pen, which is over here. Or you can just press B on the keyboard. Oops. B on the keyboard. Snap to this cursor. Snap the cursor to that corner and click. Snap it over here. And then uh, maybe dip it down like that. And then snap to that corner. Click. And over here. And back to the starting point. Now we can go to the uh, select tool. Hold shift. Click on the, uh, the orange object. And go to path. Union. And what we want to do now is take this green object and press uh, lower selection one step. Click that a few times so it goes beneath the uh, orange. Take this blue object over here. We're going to lower that a couple of times too. One. Oh, just one. It just took one. All right. So uh, we have that part all set. We have to work on the uh, the other side now, the blue side. So um, to do this, I'm going to go back to the um, the Bezier pen, which is over here. Or again, we could just press B on the keyboard. Snap the cursor onto this corner, and then to this corner, and then this corner, and then over here. And we're creating a shape that fits inside of there. And what I'll do now is let's go back to the select tool. I'm going to click on this top blue object to bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm going to set, I'm going to find a, uh, a, a color to make this. I'll make this a, a lighter shade of blue, like over here, 00CCFF. That looks pretty good. And then I'll click on this uh, shape that we just drew, and I'll make that the same shade using the dropper tool over here. If you don't see the dropper tool on your toolbar, uh, it's probably because you're using a laptop. There should be a little arrow you can click, and then a menu will pop up telling you where the dropper is. Or you can just press F7. So I'll just click and drag on that to make that the same shade. And I'll come over here to the H row and slide that to the right a little bit. Just make it a slightly different shade like that. And I'll come down here to the color picker, slide that all the way back over to the left, and I want to get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And then let's go back to the Bezier pen, press B on the keyboard, or you just click on it over here. I want to snap to this right side, and click, snap to that right side, and then click, and then bring this up through here like that, and then snap this onto this corner, click, snap to that corner, click, and then bring this through here back to the starting point like that and we'll go to the select tool hold shift click on the uh, the light not the light the um, the faded blue on the bottom object there and go to path union bring the opacity of that up all the way 100 percent and we'll grab the dropper again F7 to grab the dropper if you don't have this tool on your toolbar and uh, yeah, we'll just make this the same shade. Oops, I accidentally... There we go. We'll make that the same shade as this, but then we'll come over here to the L, slide that to the left to make that darker like that. That looks pretty good. So all we have to do now is this uh, left half, which is this uh, magenta color one. So uh, we'll go back to the select tool. Let's click on this top green object. Bring the opacity all the way up. Um, come down here to the color picker. I'm sliding this all the way to the right, and I'm going to go with this shade right here, FF0066. That's pretty good. Let me go back to the starting point, grab the Bezier pen, or again, press B on the keyboard. 
We'll start, we're gonna draw another shape connecting these corners. So we'll start at this corner. We'll come up here and over here and down here, back over there. And I'm gonna make that the same shade this pink is. So um, we'll press F7 to get the dropper, make that the same shade. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. I'll go back to the select tool. And I wanna click on this top object right here. And I wanna slide the L row to the, light, to the right a little bit just to make that a little lighter. That's pretty good. And now we can go back to the Bezier pen or just press B on the keyboard, snap to this left side and then to this left side. And then we'll bring this over here to this corner and up to here and bring it all the way through the object back to the starting point like that. Go back to the select tool, hold shift, click on the green object and go to path, union, bring the opacity all the way up. We'll press F7 to grab the dropper and we'll make this the same dark shade of pink that is, or the magenta rather. And we'll take the L row and slide that to the left to make that darker. We'll go back to the select tool. We could turn off these snapping, these two snapping uh, functions right here. Press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. I'll click and drag over both of those, I mean on all of the objects there, group it together. And there we have our uh, pie chart uh, icon using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.